I don't know about you, but every time I look on Facebook or Twitter for any news about the Players' Cup 2, well, all I find is always, how many points do I need? Well, that's why today we're going to be looking into how many points would you be expected to need to qualify for your regional finals. Let's go. Hey guys, and welcome back for another episode of Pokemath. We're now at episode 10, and today we're going to be looking at how many points do you need to actually qualify for the regional finals of the Players' Cup. I do realize this is a very big question to answer for many, so I'll try my best given the assumptions we have set for us today. And, uh, well, like to state as usual, what is the question we're going to be answering? We are indeed going to be answering how many points you need to qualify or at least give a very, I would say, quite good estimate of it, if you ask me, of course, but uh, I'll leave that up to you. So before we really get into it, please note, the approach I use here is actually rather simple and pretty straightforward, so please feel, feel free to provide your input in the comment section below. If you wish to see a different approach, or you have an idea, maybe that's, you know, most likely better than mine, but you know what, let's just go and take a look what I have in store for you. So, first of all, before we really get into it, what is the system that we're actually working with here for the Players' Cup 2? Well, each eligible account on PGO gets 50 tournaments key, from which you can access one tournament key, one of these eight-man single elimination events. So you play simply a best of one, and you can play up to three games, your top eight, your top four, and your finals. And you get points distributed the following way. If you win such an event, you get a total of 5 points, or a tournament rep as they call it, but I'm just going to call it points here today. For second place, you get 3, and if you get to the semi-finals, or third or fourth place, you get 1 point, and if you lose your first round, you unfortunately get no points. This system, system here means that, well, you can earn, well, minimum of 0 points, if you unfortunately lose every single first game. Hope that doesn't happen to you. And on the other end of the spectrum, you can earn 5 times 50 points, which equals 250 points as the max that you can obtain in this period. You have until, well, from a couple of days ago at least, until from now, till October 26th at around 6 o'clock UTC. Before then, you have to have finalized all your events at that point for the points to count. And of course, then afterwards, it's top 256 from each region qualify for their respective regional finals. And of course, thanks, except for Oceania, which is only a 128, because, well, the group is much minder, uh, much smaller, minder, wow, language, than the other areas. It only comprises now of Australia and New Zealand. So the perspective we're going to be taking today is from Europe, because I am European based, so sorry for all the American viewers, but you can really just apply this for your own area as well, and the same goes for South America. So no worries, and even for Oceania, you can actually do the same. So for the thing I'm going to use today, how many points do I need, right? So the lame answer is, well, whatever is enough to finish in top 256, har har har. So just go and win all your games, get 250 points and you're good. But not all of us are either that good or that fortunate. So we would have to look otherwise, right? So one thing you can always do, you can always keep track of the leaderboards right now. And then you can always see, well, how is it actually going for other people? However, you don't know how many tickets they've used yet or keys as they're called. But you can always get an idea how it's going, right? And of course, we're going to look at how many points you're expected to need given a certain win rate, I have to assume, because we would have to assume a win rate here because we don't know up front how other people's win rates are. But we can come with a pretty decent estimate, I believe at least. And so now go to it. Let's run for the assumptions that will be used for calculating this number, shall we? First of all, I will assume the very, very well, old standpoint that it's an overall 50 50 win rate when you play this, and that can be pretty hard to swallow for some. But you know what? We're just gonna try it out and see where it takes us. We can always redo the calculation with different win rate, however, it is much simpler to show to you how it's done with a 50 50 win rate. And overall, given the mix of players, well, you know what? I don't think 50 50 is such a bad starting point. Second of all, I'm going to be assuming that over the course of the month, a total of 200 and, uh, 2,056 players will be playing. This is not such a terrible estimate, but uh, we can also recalculate, of course, using other numbers. But you will also see shortly why 2,056 might be a good number to you know, calculate with. And 
for example, right at the moment of uh, recording this, it was 645 who played so far, which is quite a lot already at early this stage in the month. Which leaves me to my final assumption that everybody will play 50 events, that is, everybody will use all their tournament tickets. So if you start playing, you will play all 50 to give your best shot. However, as you will quickly see, this might not be the best assumption, but it makes it easier to calculate. And although, if we would assume the people will play less than a 50, I can quickly say that then the number of points actually will be reduced. Everything else held equal. That's at least something. So, you know what? We're going to take a random player and look at his or her quantile. In other words, that is, we would look at his or her distribution of points after 50 events. That's exactly what we're going to be doing here. So, to accomplish this, we're going to make use of the central limit theorem which basically says that if we have a large number of random variables, they would tend to the normal distribution. That is a very lot of statistical nonsense for most, but please bear over with me as we go through this. So you're getting a normal distribution, which is this nice bell-shaped curve, not to be mistaken with the paranormal one. So we're gonna be looking at the normal distribution and where you have to place yourself on this distribution, so to speak, in order to gain access to your regional finals. And what do we need then? In order to do this, we need the mean and the variance of the points earned at one event. Forget it for one event, we can just scale it up by 50 because of all 50 events, because each event or each game should be independent of each other. So are the events. That's at least a valid assumption, I think, but that's an assumption we do need. And then by using those two, the mean and the variance, we can actually calculate for which quantile you have to place yourself in in order to well, which quantile you have to be in order to get enough points. So remember the point rewards. Let's just put it up again. There, there. We can do this. And let's calculate the mean and the variance of this. So starting with the mean. Well, in 50% of the matches, you're going to lose the first match because remember, your win rate was 50-50. So 50% of the time, you'll get zero points. Then 25% of the time, you'll get one point. And then 12.5% of the time, you get three points. And then 12.5% of the time, you're going to win all three games and get five points. Averaging this, or adding all these sums together, we get the mean value of 1.25. You can always Google yourself to see how means are calculated. And the same goes for the variance, which is just, of course, the squared. <coughs> Not only the squared, but as you will see here, let's go through it again. So you get 0 0.5 times 0 squared. Well, that whole term is zero because multiplied by zero gives always zero, at least in my math book. And then we add all the other sums as well squared, and then we subtract the squared mean. As you can see at the end here, minus 1.25 has been subtracted here. And then we add all this together to get the variance of this, well, distribution of points, which gives 2.9375. We now have the components we need in order to use the normal distribution to calculate something here. So using this statistical magic, we know the point distribution of a random player in our sample is given as the following. So this, of course, the very cost to say this holds for a large number because of course this would tend to normal distribution, but assuming the amount of games and amount of events you can play with all these people here, this is, for our purposes, will qualify as a large number. So don't worry about that. We see a 50 multiplied in front. That's because we do it for each event first. And then we multiply by 50 to get all the events, right? So we have the mean, 1.25. You multiply it by 50, we get 62 and a half. And then, of course, we have um, the variance divided by n, which is 50. Then, of course, we have to multiply this by 50 again. But however, remember, when you enter into the variance, you have to have n squared entered here. So therefore, we get um, 50 squared multiplied by, well, this fraction here, which will give us 146.875 as the variance of this normal distribution. So this basically means that this will be normally distributed as normal distribution with mean 62 and a half and variance 146.875. Okay, okay, that's a lot of nonsense now, but let's get to the fun part where we actually get a number out of this. We can then look up at the 87th and a half percentage quantile, blah, 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 a lot of math here. Why is that so important this quantile? Well, here comes in the amount of players that I've chosen. I choose 2,000 and I can totally do this, 56. 
and of course that will correspond to indeed that if you want to be in the 256 or above so we're actually just looking at what you need to be 256 right because anything above is good to go right and then you have to look at the 87 and a half percentage quantile likewise if we would assume half the amount of players 1028 we would just have looked at the 75 percent quantile and then of course we can look up the value from the normal distribution we have to look up here uh, which will give us so we have the mean multiplied by the so-called c score you can look up this is not something i'm going to get into here but just believe me multiplied by the standard deviation which of course is just the square root of the variance and then we get 76.44 which i am going to gracefully round down because we round down the whole numbers here and get 76 points that is given these assumptions here we get 76 points as the threshold for reaching top 256 in your region following these assumptions of course however before we get to the concluding remarks here let's see how realistic this actually is so let's go back to the assumption again shall we first of all the 50 50 win rate that is the i think a tough assumption to make but we have to look at all the players that we have that may participate in this. We got a pool of really good players, not so good players. And well, all this mixed together, I really don't think the 50-50 is such a far-fetched number for this. We can always try and change this. But of course, it's very hard to assume uh, what uh, an opponent's win rate is. So it's easy if everybody would have the same win rate in this case here. And everybody's also complaining about PGO heads and whatever, whatnot. So 50-50 doesn't seem so far-fetched. Then, of course, 256 players playing. We got the number of 76. However, as I show up here, put another number in here. If you do it for half, you'll get a threshold of 71 points. So depending on what you believe in, then, of course, you can also just, you know, plug in that number and calculate it yourself. And then, of course, we have finally that they'll play all 50 events. This would definitely hold true, I think, for the top players, of course, to get most points and also people in the top of the distribution. However, when you actually look far down, you would have a lot of players that halfway through or just try a little bit and then see like, you know what, this is not something I think I can do. Or for some reason just goes bad in the beginning and you just lose motivation and don't want to play all 50 events out. So that everybody plays all 50 events out, well, might not be the best assumption. But if we would take that away, then actually we would just, I believe, we just lower the threshold. But that's my opinion on this here, of course. You can make up your own opinion on this, but now you also know what the assumptions are behind this. You can always change them yourself. But I think that overall, 76 might not be such a bad estimate after all. You know what? There's only one way of figuring this out, of course. That is looking to the end of the month and see what the actual cutoff will be. And this is my bet for Europe, of course. I do have an expectation there might be more players in the States playing, therefore the threshold would be higher. But you can always calculate that if you're interested. Please don't forget to comment on this below or, you know, just give me some feedback. I'd like to hear it. And what did we then learn today? Well, we made an estimate on how many points you need to qualify for your region finals in the Players Cup 2. So I hope you like this video. And then, well, until next time, guys. Hi guys, and thanks for watching my video today about the Players' Cup 2 Qualifier. This has been a quite interesting video to make, and I hope you liked it. And, uh, you know, otherwise, please do not forget to like and subscribe here and help me promote my channel. Help me grow this YouTube environment that we are all living in here to beat this YouTube algorithm. And, you know, get some more cool content out there. And so you, don't can, you do not miss any of my videos if you subscribe. I wish you all a great day, and until next time.